bar, apparently. Some cappuccino fire bars. Really you show. Hey, what's up, front row? Hey, how's everybody doing? The whole front row left at least four of you, which was a strong number. <laughs> All right, let, that's okay. I can stand right. Sorry, sorry. It's all right. It's totally cool. It is eating a washer. That, that might have been awkward, wouldn't have been. There's in two stalls. Max capacity. Okay. This is, uh, for those of you who are guessing his first time, Bill Aaron, sorry, I, I didn't do a full introduction with everybody because I knew that would be a fun part of my job as a host. Hey there, welcome to Greenlight Comedy Night. My name is Levi Mann. I'm uh, the host for the comedy show uh, um, here at the Paper Trails. This is uh, DJ Mann. My, my, whoo! Am I trying to rush this shit or whatever? <laughs> Slow down. Slow down. Uh, I got sativa. I'm way too excited. Mike, I need, a, I need an Intica if you, could, if you know it, but where there's one. That would the fuck out. Be funny, but like, calm down, bro. You know? Hey, man, welcome to your name. Uh, you are? Jacob. Nice to meet you, Jacob. And you are? Uh, Taylor. Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. And we did this earlier, but it's not going coming back here, but I'm really focused right now. <laughs> Mackenzie. <laughs> Mackenzie. I don't know too many other Mackenzies. I really don't. Oh, God. And. and this is this is this your man here? Yeah. This tall, handsome blondie over here. I'm so glad that you haven't got follow through like with the side fade with that really long oh, yeah. hair on top. I'm really glad. I'm gonna start doing the opposite. I think I'm just gonna shave the top off and leave the dangles in the back for sure. You know what if that was the new thing? Like the Costanza was the new dad bod. Like it was totally in. You had to have the Costanza. That'd be the best. <laughs> All right, this is what I love about this place. Feel free to have the time and, uh, and make everybody laugh. This, uh, this nice warm lounge. We were just kind of pumped the fact that we we're just smoking dope legally somewhere warm, well, it's semi legally. Yeah, you know, makes them say, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> we were just nice and stoned already. Oh, it's really different trying to word your crowd when you're all drunk, eh? Drunk people just can't wait to like get their two cents in. They're so excited, They're like yeah, you know this this side of the room. I can't wait till he calls this side of the room. I'm gonna scream so loud. Stone people, I already stone stone people. Like all right, this side of the room. Like yeah, right this side of the room. Why are you segregating us, man? What, what's with this? You know, borders you're setting up and shit. I want to compete with them. They look nice. <laughs> just lounging. So, uh, this is what's up. Introduce mostly. We have a couple of comics. Only if you don't know, thanks for coming up and supporting the uh, funny people in Southern Ontario who come around all, from all around. This awesome network. This is the uh, Smokal uh, variety. This is the uh, the Stoner Show of Niagara Falls. We're on episode 65, actually, not 66. This is show 65. <laughs> Someone messaged me today, like, 66? Really? Wow, man. Good job. I'm like, thanks, buddy. And then I look back at the calendar, and I felt bad, like, oh, no, that's next week. I just agreed to a fucking compliment that's a week early. I don't deserve that yet at all. That's if you yeah, paranoia. Maybe that's setting it. What about me? Um, terrible. terrible, right? I know. What am I, what am I doing? I can't even keep track of my show. Now, one time I woke up at 9 o'clock, like, in the morning, and it was still, like, the days were getting shorter, so it's still kind of dark, and I thought it was, I thought it was late for my show, man. So I get ready, and like, wait a minute, why do I hear birds? I hear birds. It's fucking 9 a.m. I'm getting ready to go to a comedy show. What the fuck? Idiot. Where did you guys start smoking weed? Just curious. There, Jacob? When did you start smoking weed? <laughs> high school, I'm like 16, 17. Uh, you, Mackenzie? Um, I was like 14. 14? Yeah, yeah. Well, closer. Closer. You? Oh, uh, well, it's sort of late, like 18. 18? Hey, late, 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 like, like, it's, like it's an acting career or something like that, you know? Like it's something like gymnastics or like, say, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure we can teach it anymore. Um, I'm sorry it was there, no it's not. Uh, Taylor. It's probably like 
Thank you. Um, uh, sorry, the room, I have not done an introduction with you. Yeah. Sorry? Gloria. Gloria, nice to meet you. Gloria, right. welcome to Green Light Comedy Night. And uh, you start you start smoking weed or do you not partake at all? You don't smoke uh, weed? No, I do. Time. time to start, you know, like things are getting, you know, yeah, kind of toughish. Yeah, and get escape. Um, I think my first buzz ever, I was like eight, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't weed, it was tobacco, because that gives you a kind of a buzz when you first smoke it, you know, like a little, I feel sick and nauseous, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's a little noticeably different. I'm feeling the urge to fall to the floor. You know, this is kind of cool. Except I uh, experienced that with chewing tobacco on the Via Rail. Which means, right? <laughs> what terrible idea is this? So this is a kid with a packed lip trying to get to the washroom on a train going this way, going that way. <laughs> Can't they notice? Uh, and then I thought, you know what, maybe I'm just going to stay away from tobacco altogether. That kind of, that's kind of sickening, right? It's not, it's, not, it's not good. One of the rules in the lounge, you know, smoking tobacco. Are you all right over there, sir? Am I okay? <laughs> Well, your headliner tonight made that comment tonight, like, it's 2016, who fucking smokes anymore, you know? Well, well, a lot of people are like, what are you doing? Like, for real? Yeah? Yeah. Um, fucking good comment. Those are going with that, those fire bars. Okay, I blew back around. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of tough. Holy shit! Bradley Cooper. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what you can see. <laughs> you don't understand. I hate that shit. Wow. What are you supposed to say? You're supposed to say yeah to the he's a handsome devil. Well, you know. He's actually he's my uncle. He's getting old, but whatever. Coming up soon. Related to him, actually. Sometimes she sends me money whenever Christmas is like a thousand bucks. Not a big fucking deal unless you're talking about not mine. <clears throat> <laughs> Would be an appropriate response, I guess. <laughs> I like, oh, I started smoking weed when I was about uh, 10. I had my own dealer by like 12. Little fucking shit house. Shit head. Little shit head, man. I was like a ninja, too, because my mom was selling it. And I was a little deep into like my life, but who really cares at this point? So it's great about stand-up comedy in 2016. My mom was selling it, so for me to like pinch pot off it wasn't even hers, but somebody else's bag. You know, I could come down and say like half ninja, half golem, half bloodhound. Right. Like down the side of the steps, not stepping, not stepping on the stairs. You know what I mean? All the right way down. I make make the creep. I know you got it. <laughs> so you got the fuck. We live in a complex. Just a shithead little kid, man. My buddy would live on the top floor, would keep his window open. I would assemble the tent poles in his backyard to make the fucking. I keep adding one on up higher and higher until I have this long, dangly. Bro, wake up! On the top floor, there's a window. This is right by the window. Oh shit, head. Yeah, I'm just, I guess it's probably good that you guys uh, don't have those years, just an insight what it was like to smoke dope and, you know, in preschool. In elementary. Okay, I like you in grade seven. Is that, is that grade school preschool? Yeah, we didn't smoke dope then. Sometimes my mom would blow a big fucking hot knife to open my face. <laughs> Cause I was like, you know, I'm taking a bath in the sink like most '90s kids did. So <laughs> they curled up, you know, hot knives. It's a fun experience. It's fucking one of the best stones at at the time before dabs came out and changed the you know changed the game. Hot knife was my favorite fucking thing, you know. So really like you get creative about it too. So like you have the two knives, just impress them. You either do them on the element or like heat them up by blowtorch. But like heat them up on the on the stone. This is quite the process, you know. This is like when my eyes were smoking a joint, it just kind of looked, didn't look like drugs. Hitting the smoking of a pipe didn't really look like drugs. This is starting to look like drugs, you know. Breaking off little chips and heating them up on the stove. I'm like, all right, okay, cool. Then you 
get it through this toilet paper roll with two toothpicks stuck through it and an ice cube in there because the smoke's coming out. It's going to be hot. I'm like, all right, okay, this definitely is starting to feel a little bit more like drugs. You know, this is a little more druggy to it. To and then by the time I had mastered mastered that whole hot knife process, how do you do it alone? How do you hold it? You know, how do you hold your own? Like that was a Mario coin. Worse. Worse. Um, so, hot knives. <laughs> so hard to do stone comedy with mouth <laughs> Alright. First line, sure. Delivery, cool. Connection, crowd work. Hey, what's up? Everybody's on board. Right on. Good show. But remember what the fuck you were talking about? It's not going to happen. Good luck, bro. Alright, here we go, both of you. Uh, we're doing Showtime, which is fucking awesome, actually. Just like, you know, get on you guys, man. This is a wicked venue. It's not like this, where this is much different type of, you know, a vibe. Where everybody's like in the Showtime or a comedy club where you're kind of in the dark, you know? Like, everything is in the dark. You, you can't you just have little candles. Everybody here's got like rigs set up, lights over right here, the green light coming. I, I should add one too. This guy's job, he's not fucking doing it. <laughs> He doesn't have a name. I don't know. Um, so hot knives with the toilet paper. Drugs. drugs. It's starting to feel my like drugs. So I'm doing it by myself now. Right? Which means now I've punctured a hole through both sides, got a rubber band, pulled it through, took a knot on each side, and I've strapped this thing to my fucking dog. Right? And ordered a fucking. And ordered a fucking. Hit it with two knives, except this isn't just hash. This is just oil off of a pin. So that's another thing you have to hold. How the fuck do you do that? Answer is, open up the fridge, stick that thing in sideways in the back of it, and close it. The stove's right beside it. Fucking goober oil just hanging there. I'm like, this is perfect, man. But I think to myself, holy fuck, does this ever look like drugs? I could ever, well, I, I'm an uncle of like seven fucking kids. How hard it would be to explain to a, a six, five, nine, or eleven year old what I'm doing? <laughs> uncle B.I., what you making? Um, uh, what do you have on your face? I was. I'm a platypus. <laughs> I think so, but I don't, but I don't, but the kind of things you do when you have your own apartment. When you get your first apartment, that's the kind of shit you get into. Um, what's up? What's this is so nice. Welcome in, guys. Dab bar. You're not a first time. Have you been here before, yes? No, never. All right. Welcome, Greenlight Common. Now, yo, I think I moved way back. I'm both these motherfuckers. Hell oh, yeah. Um, bring up the speed where we were on episode five, season two. Of uh, your smoke on Niagara Falls uh, comedy show. We get up our first uh, act right now. You got just filling those spots, ready to fucking go. You guys fired up? We're good. <laughs> oh God, go cool, yeah. All right. Uh, very funny man. He's just doing Showtime and he had to do his debut right here. I'm glad he came to make you laugh. Uh, make some noise. Make, make, make feel nice and welcome, Mr. Ivan Goldenko. <laughs> Hello. How's everyone doing? I'm guessing pretty high. Yeah, that's good. Male, male, female, female, male. <laughs> Last time I was up here, it was my first time up on stage, and I accidentally called a woman a man. I was like, this dude right here, and she was like, I'm a woman. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I lasted for like about a minute, right out of the game, my opening bitch. So this time, male, male, female, female, male. My gender game is on point. There are no black people in Ukraine. I'm going to start off with that. <laughs> and it's Eastern Europe. The only race we have is white people. I lived in Ukraine for the first 12 years of my life. And during that time, I only saw one black person. Only one time. It was about three months before I left for Canada. Now, before I say anything, you got to know something. I didn't know that other races existed. I might have seen non-white people in movies here and there. But to me, they were more like fairy tale creatures. They were like Santa Claus. Sure, I believed in Santa, but until I actually have seen it with my own eyes, in real life, it wasn't a for sure thing. So the first time I saw a black person in Ukraine, it was like finding a unicorn. I was fucking shocked. As soon as I saw him, I was like, holy fucking shit! It's a different color than I am! Oh my god! What? What the fuck? 
<laughs> I went back to my friends and I was like, guys, guys, you'll never believe what I just saw. I just saw a black dude walking down the street. And they were like, oh my god, that's fucking crazy. And I was like, I fucking know, right? It was such a cool thing to me seeing someone who was in my race. I thought to myself, just wait till I get to Canada, make some new friends, and then I tell them about my story, because at that point it was a story, of how I saw a black guy. Boy, are they going to be impressed. They never were, mainly because half of them were like black. They're like, yeah, I see him in the mirror every day, so it's not that impressive. I love wearing t-shirts with pictures on them. Guys, I love it. One of my favorite shirts has Adventure Time on it right here. Love Adventure Time. The only problem with me wearing shirts like I do is that I'm 23 years old. Granted, I'm not 30 and still wearing the shirts, which is exactly what I'll be doing in the future. But for now, whenever I interact with actual adults, to them, I look like I just hit puberty. I shop at the boys' section to save money. I wear these kind of shirts to create a safe vibe so I can approach young kids and invite them back to my van for some candy and cock. <laughs> or worse, I look like I live in my mom's basement, which technically is what I am doing right now, but that doesn't mean I want them to know that, you know? I want them to look at me and think, why, look at that young man. He totally looks like he has a job. Oh, he must definitely use a condom. And of course, he knows how a washing machine works. He knows how to do his own laundry. Don't be silly. If that ever happens, I'll be in the corner like, yes, they fell for it. Not a single one of those things is true. That's why I devised a plan. The next time I'll be wearing one of my tees, I'll create a reason for why it's considered adult. I would say something like, well, actually, this shirt is an expression of art. This picture right here is a replica of a painting done by one of the greatest painters of our generation. And the adults would say, oh, how quaint. What is that painter's name? And of course, I'll respond, ah, oh, shit, ah, oh, shit, ah, oh, fuck, oh, Angelo Mike? Yes, that's right. This right here symbolizes how life's an adventure in time. And the worst part about the whole situation is that I would say all of this while being fully aware that's exactly the same vague ass shit that a white drunk would say. Bobby, life's like an adventure, okay? And Bobby's just standing there, okay, Rachel? Can okay, you just go back to sucking my dick? Okay, we're just gonna have an adventure. Okay, adventure, yeah, just keep sucking my dick. Now, I wouldn't be proud of it, but we all have moments in our lives where we sound like white girl wasted, and that would be my moment. Just like Rachel in the back alley of a bar, still going at it, trying to be philosophical and shit. Let's just live in the moment and go on like an adventure. Your dick is going to explore my pussy like Columbo discovering America. Let's just go on this adventure. If you call getting herpes, pregnancy scares, or pregnancy an adventure, then yeah, I guess you are going on an adventure. Like the fucking Hobbit. Can you imagine Bill Baggins just running through the shy, screaming, I'm going on an adventure to the clinic to see if I'm HIV positive. <laughs> oh, I'd like to see that movie. My girlfriend? I know, what a transition. Don't worry, this is not STD related, nor is ever pregnancy related, because my pull-up game is fucking strong. My girlfriend, she loves to scratch me. During sex, that shit is great. My dick is having a good time, so the rest of my body is just like, yeah, dude, whatever. No, I feel less pain when she scratches me, and more of my dick getting harder. I don't know, I might be a masochist. But the problem is that she also likes to scratch me after sex, and after sex, it fucking hurts. She plays it up, too, so that I don't suspect anything. She comes up to me trying to act all cute and says, do you want to watch some Netflix now? Maybe we could put on Shrek if you want to. And I'm just like, yeah, Shrek is fucking dope. I love that. And then she's like, maybe you could rub your head a little bit, give some head rubs during the movie. All right. I, yeah, that sounds awesome. And then she's like, and then she just keeps going. She's like, oh, maybe you could buy some bag of chips for the movie, something like that. I'm like, yeah, let's go do that right now. Oh, you know, maybe you could make some chocolate chip Nutella filled cookies. I love chocolate chip Nutella filled cookies. That sounds amazing. You're being so generous right now. Oh my god, like, so generous. Yeah, you know, we get on the bed, just got all under the blankets for a little bit. I love you so much right now. All of that with the cookies and up to sex. This is just the best day of my life. Hasaisa! expected and it always hurts. During sex, it makes me feel like a freak and I fucking love it, but after, it just makes me want to knock her the fuck out. <laughs> I would never actually do it, but boy do I fucking want to. If there would ever be a time to Chris Brown my girlfriend, that would be it. 
All right, thanks a lot. <laughs> you guys have been really high. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Make some more noise. Have a cool link, everybody. Add it to my list. Yo, this is nice and warm. Sorry. Yeah, don't worry. I, I just had to point out. Uh, so, this is most of my peers. Right on. Cool. Well, we all graduated, what, the same, the same year, pretty much? Two years difference is a joke. I'm just hanging out on couches. So stoned. So fucking high. When was the last time you think you got too stoned? Your name's Dylan? Fuck, that's pretty good recall for a stoner. <laughs> if you've met somebody seven times, that's considered inappropriate and faux pas in most social circles. I met you three times, right? That's not so bad. No? Twice? Uh, it's pretty bad. Dylan, what's up? <laughs> you want to call it the last time they just got way too fucking high altogether? You want to... Uh, I have a... We're, when you start early, you, you kind of get used to it, right? It just becomes part of your daily routine, like coffee and booze and everything. Kind of like, yeah, I can schedule this in for sure. Or it's a lifestyle choice. We just do it all the fucking time. Um, it's, fuck. Fuck, it's so, it's just so I know. Dabbed out. Dabbed out. That's where it was. The guy, uh, the guy Eric, the owner. It was my birthday, and I'd never really tried dabs before. And I was like, yo, I'm going to try a dab for my birthday. That sounds like a great plan, right? Let's get super stoned on my birthday. And he's like, have a birthday dab. Come on in. And it was open, and I woke up, and I came over here like a wake and bake and did my first dab ever. And he did it up in dry rig, no bubbles, no no percolator, not like, no chamber, just like off of a friggin' nail. Good age, through a pipe, and I hacked. And I was so high, and I was so paranoid, I thought everybody was plotting against me. I picked up my rollerblades, which I had rollerblade here in, and I walked them home in my arms. <laughs> like, but you just kind of come inside of the coziness and get all stoned and warm air, go outside, and it's still like, you know, broad daylight. Oh. I am so high. Which is what like you're actually so stoned, you're paranoid again. Like you guys know the that little ice cream parlor that's been here since before Niagara Falls was legally a you know, country or a city. <laughs> like it's been there forever. Sometimes it doesn't have business for like months. There's always Lamborghinis parked out front of it. Like somebody came out like this in my corner would smoke cappuccinos and a little ice cream, and nobody's gonna bother me. Okay, that's right. We'll let you do that. You can do that. Yeah. Don't walk by that place after your first dab. I really like. I could hear the, the awning was down. They were arguing, and I guess it was Italian or or Serbian. It scared the crap out of me. I'm like, wrong place, wrong time, man. Wrong place, wrong time. Just marching, with tiny little legs, and it looks awkward when I run or speed walk because I have un, 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 un normally short legs. I bet you I'm taller than you if we sat down together. <laughs> I'm actually curious. Dylan, may I have your chair for a second? With me? I'm just curious. We just sat this up right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jacob, come stand up beside me right now. Taller than I am. All right, Ryan, sit down. stage right now. <laughs> like, I could scratch the back of my heel going around. It's just ridiculous. So ridiculous. Tiny little legs. Hold on. <laughs> just catch your foot. It's really unfortunate. Well, well it's not that. I, I'm just, I'm really the sad part is uh, everybody likes doggy style. That's just, uh, not an option for me. I have relationship problems. I can't do doggy style. I can do caveman. You can tell us, do you know how long caveman lasts for? Not very long. Like, nobody does on the toes on the back of the arch. This one? Nobody. Nobody's got that kind of balance for long enough. I don't care who you are. 
oh yeah, hang on, no, you love it, you're pulling my hair. Like, no, really, I'm just trying to hang on. Like, I'm so close to falling off the bed right now. <laughs> Those are all leg, man. What can they do? Just looking at like a like a ride that you're not tall enough to get on in Wonderland. <laughs> Guys, what is it? No, no. Whatever, man. Next year, come back with a couple hockey pads for future Canadians. Whatever. So uh, I, there was um, there was a song that I was supposed to do. Um, a DJ mastermind, Mike. May I uh, set up? We're gonna do a little stoner karaoke. Uh, actually, no, never mind. Actually, I'm completely indecisive. <laughs> I know. I'm sure I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it right now. We're gonna, we're gonna bring up I, this, I should, and this this is this is really an, an home. The funny thing is that I said I was gonna make a parody to a song because it was such a good idea, and I wrote most of it out. And then uh, I, I'm just gonna grab the lyrics for it and perform. You can set the set up the song, please, for me, anyway. Um, so it's so long. And the making. Um, you might say that uh, a couple of girls in the back gave me the idea, just to Melissa and Joella, that you could turn, turn uh, cheerleader into drug dealer. And I said I was going to do that forever ago. And they're like, yo, you, you need to do that parody song. And I'm like, all right, fine. They're like, no, really, like, it's kind of late. Like, you owe me. <laughs> Get it? You owe me. It's done by Omi. Alright. <laughs> anyway, this is drug dealing. Uh, fire away, karaoke version, I think. Oh shit, this is not anything like it. It's <laughs> <laughs> country song, for sure. Alright, we're doing the country song. When I need inspiration, I want improvement to have a green. Cause he's so strong, yeah, yeah. This can't, this can't be it. I really like to play you guys. It reminds me of Alan Jackson, though. Drop the bass. Um, do you guys know Alan Jackson? Are we country fans? Any of us? No, it's terrible. 2015. Oh, that's more familiar. <laughs> This is a song about getting off medication. When I need inspiration, my one improvement is my green, cause it's so strong. Yeah, yeah, it's always on the corner right there. Marijuana, all these other drugs are tempting, but I'm empty without crown, and they say, Do you? Do you really? Fuck it. <laughs> I'm completely lost because I'm doing this like blind. I wish we should up on the stream or something. I'm still grooving to it, but I'm completely lost. Blind, blind. Ray Charles is one. I like that. Right. So, what? There we go. Okay, can we start again? I'm sorry. That was taboo. Don't sing the real words. Oh, dope. Okay, all right. It's going to take a lot of focus right now. You got this, Levi. I believe in you. All right. Thank you. By the way, that was so smart. When I need inspiration, my one solution is my green, because it's so strong. Yeah, yeah. It's always on the corner right there, marijuana. All these other drugs are tempting, but I'm empty without crown. And they say, do you, Poppy? Would you like a T3? Do you like your Oxycontins? I'm like, no, not 
really cuz ooh, I think that I found my newest drug dealer. He is always right there when I need herb. And ooh, I think that I found my newest drug dealer. He is always right there when I need her. Get off of the bottle and slam some dishes, yo. I'm moving apple throttle. Yeah, yeah, cause I'm like wizard of drugs, but I'm getting mad shit done. All these other drugs are empty, but I'm meant to be with Crown. They say, do you, Poppy? Would you like a T3? Do you like your Oxycontins? And I'm like, no, not really, cause ooh, I think that I've found my new drug dealer. He is always right there when I need her. Ooh, I think that I've found my new drug dealer. He is always right there when I need her. Musical interlude, man. This is an old Hammer production. Welcome to the trail song. Lily Perry. One of my friends. Time to shut out. Yeah. Sorry, it's so late. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? <laughs> She gives me buds of perfection, baby, this connection, CBDs and DHC, man, I need no prescription, mama needs some too, oh shit, I skipped her in rotation, I guess that's all that's left for me to do is roll a next one, ooh, I think that I found my love with the dealer. He is always right there when I need her. Totally expected you guys to join in my now, but that's okay. I'll just dance this last stanza off bra. <laughs> Alright, stay tuned for more weed parodies. We're going to be doing uh, Disney songs under, uh, under the Sea, uh, which will be changed to on THC just so that you guys sneak peek. Alright, that was fun. Glad we just got that out of the way and it's semi work. Thank you very much. And give it up for the house putting up the equipment to do so. Just trying to remember where the heck I was. Was it possible? I do rock band by memory. Okay, yeah, pretty good at this. Pretty sure hot. Think about a real heart. Alright, um, moving on to our, our next comic. Well, yeah, one more, and then we're closing off with Hilarious, one of my most absolute favorite, favorite comics of Vision Trip Paper Trails. And uh, it's a nice warm room, we're all filled up. We get up, we're ready for next comic. We're we ready for another uh, comedian of the show. Fuck yeah. All right, make some noise for a friend of mine. I'm so glad she kept her doing it. She's here for you right now. Make some noise for Joel, everybody. Woo! Thank you. Keep it going, Levi, everyone. And that amazing rendition. <laughs> I've been waiting for that song for months and months and months. And I appreciate it, Levi. Thank you. How many months? Seven. Seven months? If you had waited two more months, it would have been like a full term song. <laughs> Levi, I can't figure out your mic stand. Spit on it. Spit on it? <laughs> Hey, that worked. <laughs> so, as you may or may not know, I'm kind of new to comedy. This is what I've been doing with my life for the last three weeks. I guess that's pretty cool. Um, things that I used to do with my life included doing tech support for a cable company in the States called Cox. It was a lot of fun. I, I tell you, nothing makes you feel like a whore, like telling people that you work for Cox for a living. <laughs> and then after I worked there, I got a job at the stag shop. That's a sex store. Where I sold Cox. <laughs> and so, if you look at it, I went from working for Cox to selling Cox. And I feel like if you take that out of context, it makes it sound like I used to be a prostitute, but then I became a pimp, and I'm really moving up in the world. 
I liked working at this next door, though. Just dicks everywhere. I swear to God, dicks are such a big part of my life that I have penis-shaped ice cubes. <laughs> That's actually like a true story. It makes for a lot of inter interesting conversations. If your water's not cold enough, put some dicks in it. If soup's too hot, throw a couple dicks in it. You want that bong hit to be a little smoother? A couple dicks will do ya. <laughs> I think dick is probably my favorite word. I replace fuck with dick a lot. Like, instead of saying, fuck yeah, if I really like something, dick yeah. It just has, like, a certain je ne sais quoi about it that really gets the point across. And the thing, it's, it goes both ways. If something, if I'm not feeling something, dick no. It just, that gets the point across just as well. <laughs> the steak chop was fun, though. Dick's everywhere, like I said. I also learned a couple life lessons, and I will share them with you today. I'm going to impart my knowledge. So the first life lesson is that lubrication is key. The second life lesson, start small when it comes to butt stuff. Start small. The second life, or the third life lesson is proper lubrication it's key. <laughs> Another life lesson is that you shouldn't bring out whips and chains on a first date. It tends to make them feel really uncomfortable. On a side note, don't buy riding crops at the sex store. Go to the horse store. I know your girlfriend isn't a horse. But trust me, the ones at the horse store are much better quality and last a lot longer and can hold up to more. <laughs> also, sex toy cleaner makes a great bomb cleaner. <laughs> Another life lesson. And then the last life lesson is that proper lubrication is really fucking key, you guys. I learned a lot about myself at the sex store as well. I learned that although I am a nice person, I can be really conniving if you get on my bad side. Like if you're not nice to me and you happen to be buying one of two specific products, one of which is a sensitivity gel, its uses, making whatever areas you apply it more sensitive. <laughs> and then the other is a numbing gel, which most guys use to help them last longer. And it numbs wherever you apply it. They come in very similar boxes. So if you're not nice to me, you can bet I'm switching those motherfuckers. <laughs> Another thing I like to do is if you come into my store and you want to introduce your girlfriend or your wife to sex toys and they're 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 not really that adventurous. I could show you some nice beginner toys that you guys can use together. But like I said, if you're not nice to me, I'm going to sell you the kinkiest gilk suit that we have in stock and convince you to bring it home to your wife and put it on for her and then have her walk in and see you like that. Because that's the best way to reveal that sort of thing, right? Don't talk about it beforehand or anything. <laughs> and then bam! Now you need years of marriage counseling in order to get past that. Either that or she likes it and I just saved two years of marriage counseling, so you're welcome. <laughs> oh man, sex shop was a fun time. My mom hated it though. She always got really upset if I used words like cock ring around her. And I, I of course, tried to use cock ring as often as possible. <laughs> so she would say, Joelle, why do you call it a cock ring? That sounds so vulgar. Shouldn't you be saying penis ring? I feel like that's more professional. And I said, Mom, it says cock ring right on the fucking package. It's a cock ring. If I call it a penis ring, I'm going to get laughed out of the store. So, of course, 
like I said, I say covering around my mom as often as I can. <laughs> She's crazy. I love her. I actually have a really ridiculous mother. Do you guys have crazy parents? No? Nobody here has crazy? Yeah? yeah. You can relate? Okay, thank you. <laughs> my mom is a special kind of crazy. She's like a crazy hippie stoner lady. She likes dancing on the beach in the moonlight, making Jamaican patties from scratch, and uh, posting hand dancing videos on the internet. These are all true things. The Jamaican patties like was a complete win. Uh, I brought a friend home to meet her. Like I had told her stories about this friend, and I was like, "Hey, you're." You're going to like this person. She's into art. You're into art. I'm into art. We're all going to have fun and do art together. And so I bring her home. And I'm like, hi, Mom. This is my friend, Heather. And she was like, oh, hi, Heather. Nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you. I'm going to go make Jamaican patties. And then she left. And we didn't see her again for three hours. And then she brought a plate of freshly made Jamaican patties up to my room where we were hitting a bomb and proceeded to get high with us and munch out on Jamaican patties. It was delicious. But she's crazy because it was just completely out of nowhere. The hand dancing is another thing. She likes painting abstract art and then using the mirror feature on her MacBook photo booth. She'll play... Can I call it music? It's kind of like chanting and like drumming with like a vague beat. I don't know how to describe it. It's strange tribal music. And she'll play that in the background while well, she uses the photo booth feature to hand dance. And there are actual videos of this on YouTube. <laughs> It's true. If you look up abstract expressionist hand dancing, you'll find it. There's one where the cat starts meowing, and my favorite part of the whole video is when she stops dancing, and she's just like, the cat is ruining my art. <laughs> she's just so offended that the cat would meow while she's hand dancing, she's tribal chanting. <sighs> What a crazy woman. I love her though. She's so sweet. We get along a lot better now that I don't live with her and now that we can smoke weed together. I didn't smoke weed until I was 17 and so that made for a lot of angsty teen years before I could get high with my mom where we didn't agree at all or get along. And so this led to me sneaking out a lot. The only problem with this is that our bedroom doors were like this far apart from each other. And I couldn't really get away with sneaking out very often because my door had a really bad creaky hinge. But I solved that problem with some WD-40. I told you guys, proper lubrication is motherfucking key. <laughs> Thank you. And with that, I will bring back your host, Levi Mitchell. Julia Service, everybody. Make some noise. Uh, yeah, go back to the big trails. The place is awesome. The best convenience store ever. I got Wi Fi at five here. If I didn't, I should have done that at the beginning. <laughs> right? Oh, 2016. It's a good year. It's a good year. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It just reminded me of Kung Fu Panda. Is anybody else looking at high and watch kids movies? Yeah, I was like, hell yeah, that's my favorite. We usually watch Inside Out, which blew my mind. Like, this is this is the movie I've been waiting for. <laughs> this one right now. Show me the frame. Where's the Pixar inside the frame? What's going on? I fucking love that movie. I fell in love with it instantly. Like, this is the best luxury I could ever have. It's just stone watching Pixar. It's a song they should stay. I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sure there's lots of Pixar material. 
<laughs> that little jumpy lamp just like turns right off right now. <laughs> Too high, I did that. All right, back on track. Um, should I tell you guys something? Me and Jim want a story. Uh, how about pets? What do you have like, like a cat? You look like you like cats. You look kind of, you, you don't think you're, you have a fish. <laughs> I don't know. A really rare one that's like, yo, look at this thing. Sometimes it's like, it's stone and stare at it. <laughs> <laughs> to bet people, though. Yeah. If there's everybody in this room owning a cat, we're all stoners. Uh, all of us have cats. <laughs> they all do. My fucking cat has one tooth that sticks outside of his face. It doesn't stay inside. His bottom tooth, like, should be underneath. There's a two other tooth down him, like his bottom canine. Sticks out to the side, like... And we... His name was Rafiki. So when we picked him up, we decided we didn't like Rafiki, so we changed to Felix. And then as soon as we noticed his snaggle tooth, he became Snagglepuss. <laughs> And since Snaggle Post, this has been breathing down to Snaggy Snoots. And now it's just one of those ridiculous fucking things you say to your pets. What are you, what are we saying? Snaggy Snoots! <laughs> just say stupid shit to your pets. <laughs> other, other pets, uh, a, a Jogo, and it, it's, uh, it, it's like an all white dog. You guys don't know what Dogo is, right? Or just Dogo Argentina, or whatever, it looks like a pit bull, kind of. And uh, her name is Pink because she's like so white and like short haired that you can kind of see the pink in her ears and all that. I know she's absolutely gorgeous, pink and fit. It's like that. But Pink turned into Pinkaroos, just like that. And we, we walk through the door like Pinkaroos, and you're almost embarrassed how ridiculously childish you sound. You know? What am I doing? Um, I, I uh. You know, and I like the story. I saved a cat once, um, which means one had to kind of die. That's uh, part of that story. I mean, to bring the room down here, I'll explain. I came home from school one day. Uh, I was just doing construction renovation at the Niagara program, and uh, well, and it was like January. I came home, kicked off the boots, like, wow, I'm so tired. I'm so pooch. I need to stop smoking weed, but not right now. I'm going to smoke a bong. I'm going to take a nap. All right, things will be, things will be better. And I crashed into my couch, and I didn't realize that I landed on one of the kittens that my uh, girlfriend's cat had just had. And, and like, we landed on the couch. My couch was already pretty loud, so I didn't notice. Like, when you fell into a couch, and, and the same noise-ish. But I could tell because all the other kittens in the litter were looking at me like... And fucking started running. I'm like, holy shit, what did I do? Oh my god, oh my god. And I'm looking around panicking. And I'm, I, I, I lift up the throw blanket that was lying on top of the couch, and this cat is TKO, like wind, wind knocked out of it. It's just lying there lifeless. I pick it up, my fucking heart is going through my chest. My mind is going, what am I going to kill me? My girlfriend's going to fucking kill me. My girlfriend's going to fucking kill me. My girlfriend's going to fucking kill me. Holy shit, my girlfriend's going to fucking kill me. What am I going to do? And the little voice in the back of my head said, Well, what do they do in the movies? <laughs> So I brought that little fucker to the kitchen, and I laid him out on the counter, all right, raised my hand up, pried his little kitty jaws open, and I gave him mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. He's a mammal, right? You just need, you just need to give him mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Sorry, it's not. It's a cat, so it's meowth-to-meowth. -meowth. <laughs> Still with me? So I took this big, deep, life-saving breath, like as though it was a creature mice. <laughs> Hold up to hit expansion to the, to the back. It's now like yeah, you know, like a small furry. Like you like you put a like a tube sock on a, on a balloon and blew it up. And it coughed, sneezed, and bit me harder than I could ever fucking imagine. It came back like like. Oh, oh. Fuck, what do you do with a cat in your hand? You can't. You don't pull a cat off of you. You know, you can't pull a cat off of you. It just doesn't work. You know what I mean? They got much better. You know, they're in your skin right now. You know. Hindsight, I probably should just like ran it under the tap real quick. But it probably would not work. But instead, I just gave mercy to it. Like I'm sorry, little fucker. Just let him go down to the floor. I'm like I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm like, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, let me go. You have eight more, you fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Give me a break. I didn't mean to squish you. I brought you back. All the four minutes getting to the door. Okay. Oh, it fucking worked. Work. Oh, look at him running around with a little shithead. Can't believe that. So you can't do that. I don't know if it works on dogs. I'm just saying. Little night, you guys know CPR. It does work on your own pets, too. Uh, that. 
story was brought to you by the dab I just did, for sure. <laughs> um, nice, thank you very much, Big Trails. As a matter of fact, you guys are awesome. Thank you for bringing our headliner right now. Guys, I'm full energy. Thank you guys so much for this every week. Give it up for the comments on the show as well. Uh, Ivan and, uh, and Joel, good enough for them. And we'll be back with another fresh lineup next week with episode 66. Let's close it out with this, uh, this uh, very funny man's uh, close of the show for you. So bring the energy right back up. Mr. Liam Kelly, everybody. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good. Yeah, I know. I look like your parole officer. I understand that. Like <laughs> half the people are like, "Oh fuck, who's that? Who brought their dad here? This is not good." <laughs> or maybe their mother. We're not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like Katie Lang. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Why is she talking to us? We're not sure. <laughs> I think I'm the ultimate man, you know, I really do. I think I am, because you know what, every lesbian woman is trying to look like a man, and the man they try to look like is me, you know? They don't try to look like you. I've never seen, like, a lesbian come out like, hey, look, it's Caitlyn Jenner, she was, no, it doesn't happen, like, hey, look, it's Chaz Bono, she doesn't have a beard like that, she tries to look like me, I must be the ultimate man, I must be. Every woman trying to be a man looks like me. That's that sucks to be you, huh? Yeah. You think that beard makes you all manly and shit? Not that much. Turns out a slightly effeminate chubby dude is the ultimate male. Like that's it. I didn't. I, I, this this body didn't work for me for the first thirty odd years, and now all of a sudden it's handy as shit to look like this. Like ah, good. It's good. For example, I get pulled over by the cops. You look like this. You think I get in trouble? No fucking way. No fucking way, guys. Look at this. This is a true story. I did a show in Durham region the other day. I pull up to a stoplight at like midnight, and there's a cop car beside me, but he doesn't have his headlights on. Right? So I go, officer, under your window. And does his window down. I go, sir, do you realize you're driving without your headlights on? Cop looks at me. He goes, oh, sorry, sir. You know, I thought they came on. <laughs> he turns them on. <laughs> I go, sorry, I didn't let you off in the morning this time, and drove away. And I'm like, if you're darker than me, don't try that. You will be fucking beaten to death. They will send me a team your ass. They will fucking fuck you up. But when you look like this, they're like, thank you, sir. That's what the cops call me, sir, man. That's fucked up. That is a weird shit thing to happen. <laughs> because I look like a cop, that's it. Yo, you guys got, what, Niagara cops here? Is that what you guys got in here? Niagara Regionals? What do you got here? Niagara Cops? I heard they're one of the top three police forces here in town. That's what I hear. Top three. No. All right, guys. <laughs> Not every joke's going to work. Not everyone is going to work. That made me laugh. Guys. Hey, you know, sometimes that's what we're here for, right? And I was like, ah, I can't all be good. I can't all be good. That's it. I like that you put the, uh, the, the jars of pot up just to remind everybody while we're here. Just... Don't put up like a sunny day or anything like that. Just don't forget you smoke weed. It's important. I'd like to thank Levi Mann for doing the old uh, killing a kitten story before bringing me out. That's always, uh, that's always a good one, eh? Hey, hold on. I know what was funny. Remember the time I killed a kitten? That was the best story. This will make the room happy before Liam comes up, eh? Everyone's going to go home. Hey, there's a great story at the county, but a guy who killed a kitten, it was goddamn... I don't know how it ended, but, uh, fuck. We all like a good kitten-killing story. That's what, uh... I don't understand, man. I don't understand. Some things I want to talk about tonight. Oh, yeah, that's important shit, guys. I got a new belt. I'm talking about I got a new belt right here around my waist. You know, that's an important thing. You know, like, you guys are all young, man, but, like... Man, I had bought a new belt in a long time, you know what I'm saying? So I went out July, January 1st, the stores were open. I went out, I was like, fuck it, I'm buying myself a belt. I'm going to do it. You know the last time I felt, you want to guess the year I bought a belt, my friend? Want to guess? Yeah. What guess? Just guess. Fine, it's no right or wrong. 85 is not bad. You are the closest we've ever come. Thank you, sir. 85. 89 is when I bought this, this current piece of, uh, that's amazing, isn't it? 89. Clap if you were born in 89. Yeah, so one guy is as old as my belt, and everybody else is younger than my belt. Think about that. You know, all the life experiences you had, you know what I'm saying? You know, like the first time you smoked weed, first time you got laid, the first time you jerked off, the first time you caught your parents doing it, the first time you uh, read a book, the next time. Uh, well, it'll happen one day, guys. Hey, I, when Levi killed the kitten, you know what I was wearing? I was wearing this belt. That's what I was wearing. All those days of your life, all those important dates of your life, I was wearing this belt. You know, like, think about it. When when the Challenger blew up and uh, I was wearing this belt, 
I don't live with that shit. You know, I, Bowie's dead. I don't know. So that's what we have a belt. I talked about it. Like Bowie's gone. He's like, space out of you, motherfucker. That's a bitch. If you think that the cow who made this belt back in, what, like 88 or something, like he might have been born in like 75, this, this could be like 45 year old leather. I'm like, this is. And I never had like a fancy belt at home, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not one of those fucking pieces of shit who's got several belts, you know? <laughs> that guy, those guys are fucking douchebags. They fucking do marches and parades and shit. Like, we're proud. I got two belts. Fuck you. Go fuck each other. I don't give a shit. I got one belt. I wear it every goddamn fucking day. It's got sweat stains on it from when I landscaped. Like, it's got, I, when I got married, you know what belt I was wearing? This fucking belt, you know what I mean? Like, the tuxedo? My, my wife said, what are you wearing? I'm like, it's my belt. What do you want, man? I got my fucking pants to fall down? Maybe later, but let's go, baby. I got to have these fucking, you know, day my kids were born. It's wearing this fucking belt, guys. This is an important thing to me. This is, you know those guys with that, like, nice one that's, like, patent leather with, like, they hang it up there and, like, on special occasions. Put that belt on. I know. No, fuck that shit. That's what broke up my marriage. My wife was like, you need a new belt. I'm like, you need a new attitude. Because I'm going to wear this belt till I die. And I was saying, we were finished. That's it. I broke up with her over a belt. I feel like I might have gone far enough with the belt, maybe. I don't know. We're going to go farther. It's just important. I, this guy, he's like, bro, I never thought this much about it, but it's fucking important. A belt. You know what I'm saying? It's good shit, you know? I, did you know, in researching this bit, uh, I found out that they're actually called, you don't have, like, like sheep. They have wool, and they shear them, and they grow the wool again, and they shear them. That's the same with belt cows. You know what I'm saying? It's true. They just insult them a lot, so their th skin gets really thick. They're like, you're fat, you're stupid cow. We hate you. No one likes you. We get pictures of you on the internet fucking yourself. Hey, fuck you. And then they get a thick skin, right? Because they're insulted, right? And then you just strip off enough for a belt, you know what I'm saying? And then they go out in the fields for a while, and then they insult them again, and then they get thick skin again. I made that last part up, alright? That's not true. There's no such thing as a belt cow. Although that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Like, you know those, those cheese things you have and you just slice it thin on there? You're like, it knows, but it's just like 36 inches. Cut it off. There we go. Put a belt buckle on it. It's good. Hammer some holes in it. That would be amazing. Don't you think? It could be good. That's a new thing. You want to get Monsanto to do something. Grow a fucking cow that you can harvest a belt off it and it still lives. It's not a, get going with your GMO shit, guys. <laughs> That's important. This is important. This, I got skinny for like three weeks in 95. I still wore this belt. I had to, I had to put holes in it with an awl and a hammer. I took an awl and a hammer and I hammered them. Well, I took the belt off first, guys. I didn't fucking wear it while I was over like, ow, 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 ow. Fucking stupid. I'm not from Welland. Calm down. This is it. But <laughs> I've had this belt so long, it's like a it's like a nose piercing. It's healed itself. But you can't even see it. It's like 24 years ago I lost that weight. It's like, fuck it. You couldn't stick it through anymore. I'd have to re-pierce. Yeah, I'm still talking about the belt, in case you're wondering. I know you went to the bathroom, you come back, hey, what did I miss? A lot more about the belt. That's what you missed. <laughs> Guess what? I got about 20 more minutes of belt shit to tell you about. <laughs> the new belt I got is double-sided, guys. Yeah. Brown on one side, black on the other. Huh? How about that? Here's the way I look at it, right? This first belt lasted me 27 years. I got a double-sided belt. How long should the new belt last me, guys? 54 years. That's right. 54, I think, I'm, this is probably the last belt I'll ever have to buy. That's what I, I'm in my 40s. I don't see me buying another one the rest of my life. I really don't. I figure between my belt and the new belt, even in 50 years, I'll call that new belt, right? This is belt. The other one's new belt. Even in the 2068, like, which belt do you want, granddad? I want new belt. Bring me the new one. <laughs> Is that the double-sided one, Granddad? Yes, the double-sided! I'm having a tan day! Bring me the tan side! Grandpa can't flip the buckle anymore! Give it to me tan, boy! I do this to make myself laugh. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I think the stupid belt thing is the stupidest thing I've ever done on stage. 
but I can't stop it anymore. Every time I go up, I'm like, I just get time to put my belt. How much time do I got? 20? I can talk about my belt. <laughs> Easy peasy. I made new per I made new purchase in 25 years. I gotta talk about it, man. Some people get cars. Some people like buy houses. Shit, I got a fucking belt, guys. It's important. It's life life goals. I'm a single man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might have a new belt, but you didn't buy it. She bought your belt. You know what I mean? You come home and she's got some mesh fucking bullshit weave that doesn't even have real holes in it. You gotta find your way through the mesh. You know those things? They come free with a pair of pants at the gap. That's what she don't wear those things, man. Be a fucking man. You're from the Ukraine. You don't need that shit. We don't fuck around. I wear a leather belt. Still beating hard. I don't give a shit, man. This is good. <laughs> oh, dear. What else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about things. I'll come back to the belt soon, guys. Trust me. This is going to be... It'll never end. You're getting past something. What a, look at this. Isn't that beautiful, eh? Pot, the friend maker. You know? It's true. It's true. I have kids, guys. Anybody else have kids? You guys have kids? We just fuck a lot. You guys just fuck a lot? That's cool. I say I have kids so I don't fuck, but that's okay. I, I fucked a lot when I was your age, guys. I fucked all the time. That's what's going to happen. This is the thing. People in their 40s, I never have sex anymore. I'm tired. I had a lot of fucking sex. I did it all the time. It was exhausting. That's a lot of work, too. Oh, especially if you make her orgasm. Fuck, that's a lot of work. Would you guys get your shit together? Come on, jerk off all the time like guys do so we can make it happen for you. Let's go. You know what I'm talking about, this guy? No? That's okay. You know, one day it'll happen. It's okay. That's okay. Yeah, you know, fuck it. Yeah, if you're getting satisfied, what do you care, man? That's what I was married. What's your name, my friend? Jacob. That's a good orgasm name. It's not bad. It's not bad. Here's the thing. It's like, when you have children, you name your child like some cute little fucking bullshit name, not realizing they're to grow up to be an adult who fucks. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Jacob, that's a good name, right? And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, Jacob. Oh, yeah, oh, Jacob. Oh, ja Jacob! That's a good one. I like it. I'm, that's good. It's good. But, like, no matter how old she gets, it'll be disgusting to yell out, oh, yeah, I'm coming, honey boo-boo child. That's going to be fucking gross. <laughs> it's disgusting. I'll be like, ew, fuck. She'll be 40, she'll be a truck stop hooker, like, chain smoking, and be like, oh, fuck your cut for five bucks. And you still aren't going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, here it comes, honey boo-boo child. It'll be fucking sick. <coughs> no one wants that, you know? So give your kids a good fucking name, you know? That's true. What's your name, guy? J? J is good. You just stress that J out as long as you want, right? Like, uh, in real life, you know? What was your, your Ivan, though? That's not a great one. Isn't that what your name was? It ends. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's that? The Ukraine is good. Oh, what's the Ukraine? Yvonne. Yvonne! Yeah, like, Yvonne, more. Like, that's good. I like that. That's, you know. Yvonne, you're going to keep fucking me. I know you're done. All right, that's good. I like that, though. Yvonne's a good one. That's all right. That's all right. Was your name Mackenzie? That's a... That's a solid, that's a solid orgasm name. Absolutely, eh? Like three syllables? That's awesome. Mackenzie! No, it's good. This is what you do when you have children. Like, just, your wife's like, what name of Tristan? Like, hang on one second. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Tristan! No, no, I'm not naming my child Tristan. That's fucking, how about this one? Oh, yeah, Tristan, Tristan, yeah, Tristan! Yeah, all right, that's it. Want a gay child named Tristan? That's the way it works. And not that I care. It's just, just pick it. Pick it. Pick your friends. Pick your nose. You pick your friends' nose. When I named my children, I was wearing this belt. That's true, you know. I, got it. I remember that day. I got up, put my pants on. It was in my belt. Uh, that's where it was. My belt's in my pants, so I just put it on. Feels good. Important day, guys. Important day. Day I lost my virginity, man. Same thing. Remember that day? You remember the day you lost it, my friend? Remember that day? Good day. Yeah? Or what was her name? Oh, oh yeah. All right, good. <laughs> so special. <laughs> there's, you haven't said a word in English since I asked you. You're like, I speak pot. It's okay. <laughs> Belt. <laughs> I remember the day I picked up my girlfriend at the IGA. Remember, remember the IGAs? IGAs are good stores. She was, a, she was a cashier. And she introduced me to her friend, Darlene. I remember that. Because she did this. She goes, Darlene, come here. I want you to meet my boyfriend. 
and she does this with her finger. And Darlene shouts across the IJ, Hey, Michelle, you know I don't come when you finger me. <laughs> and I was like, that girl's all right. I should have fucked that girl, you know? Instead, I married the other one. It was just stupid. <laughs> married her, too. What are you thinking, huh? Fuck, don't marry your mistakes. I did that. That was so stupid. Oh, well. But I ate a whole pumpkin pie that time. That's true. When I picked up, pumpkin pies were on sale. It was November. It was after Halloween, and I had to get rid of the pumpkin pies. It was like two bucks. I ate the whole fucking pie, guys. That's that's what you want when you're pumping, you know? A whole belly full of pumpkin pie. <laughs> What is that? Is that nutmeg? What is that, cinnamon I'm tasting? <laughs> Fuck, I had to loosen my belt, you know? I did. <laughs> a little blow and put it right beside me. It was right there, though. We finished. I high five. Yeah, guys. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> guys, you guys manscape? Guys, you guys manscape? Yeah, yeah. This is what, this is the thing is, young guys are hairy as fuck from here up, you know what I mean? Like, they're like from the nipple to the top of the hair, it's maximum. You got a lot of hair, go, I like it, man, and I can't, look it, I have a soul patch, see? <laughs> I've been growing that fucker for five years, you know, like, I shaved five days ago, look at this face, this is fucking terrifying, but this, so me, I can't, I'm in my 40s, you know, manscape when you're in your 40s, man, I want to go the opposite, I'm trying to get as much hair down here as humanly possible. I wanted just to be like a fucking 70s afro when I take off my pants. I wanted to be like, poof. <laughs> ah, here's the forest, find the tree. <laughs> That's what I want, you know? But I, cause I tried manscaping. I tried it. I was like, fucking stupid. Last time I put a blade near my cock, I lost this much. It's not a good idea. Like, don't, don't do that. It's not good. But here's the thing is, why don't they say that the fucking flex ball technology is for shaving your balls. Just fucking say it, you know? The new, because you see that commercial with the razor, and it's on a thing that's going like this, and it's like, hey, this razor holds on for dear life. That's amazing. I have never been shaving my cheek, and it's been jumping all over the place, you know? Like, oh, my cheek is all, oh, stop, cheek, stop. I'm trying to shave. I'm trying to, how can I get the spot on my thing? Stop rolling, face. Stop. Just say it. It's just because your balls are constantly rolling, right? That's a fact. Your balls can't stop rolling. They're like sharks. If you stop rolling, you die, man. Like, your balls, and you can't shave a rolling peach bit. It's fucking impossible. Who came up with this idea? This is like, I want to meet the guy who's like, hey, I have a great idea. Let's shave our balls. And be like, fuck off, man. You're an idiot. So that's the thing. Is why don't they just fucking say that? You know what I mean? And here's the thing. So I tried. I tried one day. I see what this is. I had to get down in my haunches, you know, and I had to see over my gut, you know what I mean? So I took care of business, sort of. I did a half-assed job, because who was going to see it, you know what I'm saying? It was like I was buying a carnation for a prom I wasn't going to, you know? Like, it doesn't matter. This is for my own enjoyment, right? So the, so the next day, though, I'm walking around, my thighs are sore. And I'm like, why are my thighs sore? I'm like, oh, yeah, from shaving my balls. <laughs> When you're so old and out of shape that you fucking get winded shaving your balls, don't bother. Kill yourself. Forget it. Who cares? No one cares anymore. Fucking horrible. That's not a good thing. And here's the thing they have for the ladies, too, eh? The lady flex ball. Oh, now we're ladies, you know? Like, ladies, I... Do your pussies wrong? Like, I've never noticed this. Like, like, are you trying to shave your pussies on a train? Like, oh, shit, I gotta get to the office. It's just, they gotta get the flex blade in here. This is great. Get the, like, it's insane. And what happened to the good old Bic, pink Bic that women had in the, sh in the shower? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, oh, you guys are too young. Fuck! <laughs> Every woman I ever dated had that fucking double blade pink Bic in the shower with old crusty pubes in it. And if you, stay, if you were too late in the work in the morning, you're like, shit, I gotta go to work. I gotta shave. You're like, ah. Ah! It's all dull and shit. Ah. Flex ball technology. Just say it! Hey, if you're going to shave your balls, this is the best product for ball shaving. Just say it. Don't beat around the bush. Fuck it. We understand this shit. That's right. That day my thighs were sore, though. It's wearing my trusty belt, thank God, you know? We got through the day, me and my belt. It was okay. We're wearing out the belt. It's okay. I see that. It's, it's like, oh, I'm kind of done. Uh, it's okay. I might bring it back later. You never know. You never know. Uh, talk about my belt. Yeah, I did that. Talk. I have, I have twins. I have twelve-year-old twins, a boy and a girl, and uh, have had the sex talks with them. I have custody of my children, by the way. 
Uh, you've known me for 20 minutes. Would you trust me with your children? <laughs> That's how crazy my ex-wife is. That's, you know, like, huh, hmm, you're a teacher, you're educated, and this is a semi-alcoholic pothead. We're going to get the kids to the semi-alcoholic pothead, because you are fucked. You are completely fucked. You know how fucked up that is? I get child support paid to me. Huh? Yeah, it can be done, guys. It can be done. All you have to do is be a better parent and make no fucking money, all right? That's how it works. $452 a month straight to my pot dealer every month. Thank you. I know what my pot budget is. That's supposed to be to buy kids things. And so I don't beat the kids to death, okay? Fuck off. That's how you do I mean, did your parents smoke weed? Did your parents smoke weed? No? Were they angry? Was your dad an angry dude? You probably could have used the weed. That's what I do. My kids drive me crazy. I'm like, Daddy needs a loaf of bread. I'll be right back. They think I buy bread like four times a day. Like, they never ask me to. Where's that bread? Like, nah, never mind. I just drive around, listen to Willie Nelson and smoke weed. It's fantastic. I drive a Corolla. No one pulls me over. Look at this face. Are you crazy? I drive around my town smoking weed. So I'm like, well, there's got to be a black kid here somewhere. My God. This is Richmond Hill. Oh. That's where I live, Richmond Hill. I'm trying to give the uh, sex talk to my kids. My son was no problem. Explained the birds and the bees. It was very easy. At the end, I go, do you have any questions? He goes, oh, I think I got it. Uh, don't let me catch you. Throw out your Kleenexes, <laughs> delete your history. I got it. You know, I was like, hey, good boy, you're done. Uh, I, I, I finished with my daughter. I go, do you have any questions? He's like, in fact, I do. I'm like, fuck, uh, I don't want questions. I don't need these. She goes, here's the first question. She's 12 years old. She goes, Daddy, how, how, how do boobs grow? How, how do boobs grow? This is what she wants to know. Did you ever ask your parent how do boobs grow? This is what. She wants to know, how do the boobs grow? I go, I don't know, honey. I did it by drinking beer. That's what I did. <laughs> just drank a shit ton of beer. And I got them. I didn't fucking plan it. I just had to loosen my belt. It's fine. It's good. I don't know. Uh, so I, I said, the way I noticed it in elementary school was they seem to just go pop, pop. That's what I think happened. So if you ever hear pop, pop, look down. You're probably going to get your boobs. I think that's... I haven't read a Judy Bloom book in a long time. I don't know. I got to brush up on you. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. But... Uh, then she wants to know, am I going to have big boobs or small boobs? My son didn't have a question about this, right? He just, I just give him small underwear, we look at each other, we nod, I walk away. We understand each other. It's fine. He's like, okay, Dad, I'm not going to ask. My daughter wants to know, am I going to have big boobs or small boobs? This is what she wants to know. I go, well, honey, uh, breast size is based on the heredity of your grandmothers. And since Grandma Arsenal had huge ones, and Grandma Kelly had small ones, you're going to have one big one and one small one. <laughs> This is why we need Kathleen Wynn. You know what I mean? I need Auntie Kathleen to tell all the fucking right stories, man. I like the new sex ed curriculum. Fifty Shades of Grey for kids. It's fantastic. This is it. Uh, Ask to notes for juniors. Uh, I'm kidding. That's not the truth. I didn't. So my daughter, she's too smart. She's like, that's not true, Daddy. I Googled it. Turns out breast size is based on the heredity of your parents. And I hope I get your breast size, Daddy. Oh, ah, that hurt. I almost took off my belt, you know what I mean? I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I respect my belt too much. I'm talking about you don't want to fuck up a fine piece of leather like that. For so many days, I mean, you just got to you know, understand. How long have I been talking about my belt for? Let me just see. Oh, a long time. Almost seems worth it, though. <laughs> almost. <laughs> There's a couple of things else I wanted to talk about. What I want to talk about? Oh yeah, ultimate man. Yeah, I can only talk to women with a microphone in my hand. This is a true story. This is true. This is so bad. I can have like I have. I talked I I sat at a table with two women. I didn't say a word. Three. I didn't say shit. Did I? I just sit there quiet. Like, I don't say anything. Don't look at me. I pretend I'm not here. Okay, but I got a microphone in my hand. Someone will be, hey, let's talk about boobs. Ah. <laughs> Horrible. So I have a microphone and PA in my bedroom. So, <laughs> so when the loving starts, I'm like, lick my balls. Lick my balls. Come on, baby, lick my balls. And she's like, Liam, why are you whispering? I don't want my mom to hear. Who told you to stop licking my balls? That's not true. My mom. My mom's dead. Uh, guys, uh, come on. <laughs> ah, I'm such an idiot. Guys, this is what I'm trying to say to you guys tonight. Is I had a great time. Did you have a good time? Did we, did we have a good time? This was this turned into a hell of a uh, extravaganza of comedy. I think you learned some things. You learned 
to name your children good orgasm names. You know what I'm saying? Like, were you thinking, what were you thinking for your first son? Ivan Jr., no doubt, right? Like, <laughs> be a pro wrestler, fucking, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, this is good. But don't do it now. Now you're learning. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's your old man's name? I mean, he's got a hell of a name. Petro. Petro. Fucking right, eh? <laughs> Petro. Now that's the name. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, Petro! Sorry, you just flashed back, didn't you? It's when you were a child. You're like, oh, my God, I heard that every night. Oh, that's what that was. I know where he did it. I love my mother wanted gas. Oh, this is horrible. Now I know they were fucking. Oh. Sorry about that. I do apologize. All I'm saying, guys, is I got a new belt, you know? And it's important to talk about it. Because you know what? I'm going to be wearing the new belt when I die in 50 years. I am. That's it. I, I'm going to be doing that. And when I die in 50 years, that new belt's going to be around my waist. The old belt be around my neck. That's how I'm going to do it, guys. <laughs> Nothing like getting on a suicide joke. Yeah. Hey, why don't I bring up uh, Levi? He can talk about killing another kitten. Let's make that happen. <laughs> guys, you've been a wicked crowd. I had a great time. Thanks. <laughs> Paper Trail Blazers make some noise for Liam Kelly's belt, everybody. That's been a hell of a show. And for everybody else, yo, thank you for the comments on the fucking lineup. I've enjoyed You guys are amazing. Mike, thanks for letting us do this at Paper Trails. Uh, that was 65. We'll be back next Thursday. I guess now uh, I guess now we get to be a stone. Is that what we do? We get high now? Can we get any higher, man? All right, so uh, we smoke weed. Uh, good night, you guys. I've been Levi Mans. Big Vapor Trail, Screen Lake Company, and I take it easy with me.